people are building an e-commerce website? Everyone, yes. <laughs> How many of you have built a rec engine into your app? Yay. <laughs> so um, just a, bit, a, a little bit about me. I, I love data. I think data is very seductive. I love to find patterns and signal in the noise. <clears throat> Before full stack, I was a management consultant. And I also work in strategy and marketing for various tech companies. And so I actually wanted to give a talk on machine learning. We had a tech talk on machine learning at some of the CS Saturday. And um, apparently, somebody already gave a talk um, on the topic. And so I, did, I went back to the whiteboard, and I did some more research. And two of the topics that I came up with, one is um, self-driving cars. And this is the second one. And I thought, well, self-driving car is really, really cool. Um, I work for SolarCity, and Tesla just came out with the Model 3, which has an amazing self-driving autonomous car um, software. But I thought, well, it, in order to do that, in order to implement that, you need a car, first of all. And then you also need a camera in order to test the software. Whereas this one, everybody's already working on the topic. And so I thought it would be a great way for me to talk about it, but also to demo <coughs> the app that my team, which is Dane, Cindy, and, um, and Justin built together. It's going to be our first live demo as well. So what is machine learning? Machine learning is a, a subset of computer science where you give your computer um, a software, a program, and it's going to do things that it's not explicitly programmed. Um, so there are two types of machine learning. There's supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Um, how does that work? For example, let's say you give a program five photos of, of Rafi, our lovely fellow. Um, so that's facial recognition, right? Um, supervised learning means after those five pictures of Rafi, the sixth picture of Rafi, the program is going to likely say, oh, that's Rafi. That's not like Victor. Whereas unsupervised learning means you give the machine a bunch of photos of, of people, of cats, of puppies. And it's going to say, oh, these are people, these are cats, these are puppies. So that's unsupervised learning. And the same algorithm is also used in handwriting recognition and things like object recognition, which is used in self-driving cars. I'm not talking about this, but I thought I should just sneak in a little slide. I think it's really cool. Um, when I was living in Mountain View, um, it, near the Google campus, you would see all these cars driving around without somebody in it. Or actually, there's somebody in it, but they're like reading a newspaper. So they're testing the car. Their job is to test the car by sitting there and doing nothing. I thought that was pretty cool. So why, why is recommendation uh, engine cool? Why, why is it cool? Why are we talking about this? So Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, says something really famous. He said that a lot of times people don't know what they want until you show it to them, like until you tell them, oh, this is what you want. So a good example would be Amazon, right? So Amazon, uh, e-commerce juggernaut. Amazon, in 2011, had $9.9 .9 billion in annual sales. In 2012, guess how much they, they sold in a year? $13 billion in annual revenues. <clears throat> That year, Amazon released an article about their um, recommendation engine. They didn't explicitly tell um, to the press what it was, but it, they credited a lot of their success thanks to the recommendation engine that they wrote. So 35% of sales went through recommendation. For example, um, let's say you buy a camera, right? And you don't even know that you need a memory card or a camera case, but if Amazon says, why don't you just also purchase this? Chances are you're also going to add it, right, Laura? Exactly. So the key here is serendipitously discover great products, things that you don't even know that you want yet. That's really the key here. Tinder. Um, Tinder CMO uh, very, very strongly said Tinder is not an online dating app. It's a social network and a discovery tool. Swipe right on that one. Um, Guilt. Complete the look. Um, I used to work for Guilt Group in New York, and Guilt um, I used to work in a strategy and planning team there. And let's say, let's say um, Cindy, you want to buy a dress to go to a, a dinner party, right? Why don't you also purchase a pair of, I don't know, Prada shoes to go with your dress? You didn't even think about it, but now you are thinking about it, and you're considering it. <laughs> the network effect. Um, Nextdoor.com, I used to work at Nextdoor. Nextdoor is a way for you to talk to your neighbors and learn about recommendations and things in your neighborhood and events and things like that. Um, Facebook and LinkedIn very famously used a graph algorithm to suggest people that you know and things, jobs that you might be interested in or things that you like. It's very fascinating. So 
You build a rec engine in order to increase sales and revenues in the case of Amazon and Guild, or you can use it to increase user engagement and signups like Nextdoor and LinkedIn and Facebook. Google News, 38% more click through because of recommendations or Netflix. In 2009, they had a million dollar prize where they awarded a team that come up with the best algorithm to predict movie ratings. Um, but how do you build a rec engine? I'm gonna have two quick demos. The first one is based on the user, um, user base. So <clears throat> let's say Justin loves to order pizza and um, salad over lunch on Seamless. And um, Jason loves to order pizza and, um, and salad for lunch on Seamless as well. And he also orders a can of, of soda, uh, of um, <clears throat> vanilla Coke every single time. And so chances are Justin might also like the same thing. So why don't we recommend this to Justin? Why don't you, Justin, why don't you add this to your cart? So the algorithm is based on a cosine of similarity. So if you and Jason and Justin have similar tastes, and the two of them also like similar things, then you, you can recommend those items to the other one. This is the library that I used. Um, <clears throat> it's called GAR, which is called the Good Enough Recommendation Library, literally. Um, so what you can do is, after you npm install the library, can you guys see? After you install the library, you require it. And then, <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about quickly the TV show example. So let's say um, Silicon Valley came out two days ago. Who watches, who watched Silicon Valley here? Yay. So I love that show, right? So I love Silicon Valley. Um, but I also like um, Halt and Catch Fire, which is another computer show. <clears throat> and Gabe, Gabe also likes Silicon Valley, right? <clears throat> so I can do things in. So a namespace, so I had to initialize a namespace as well. And a namespace is essentially a bucket of events that will not interfere with other buckets. And an event is, consists of three things, a person, an action, and a thing. So Henry lies at the Valley, or like Gabe lies at the Valley. And then I key these things in, uh, go through a promise. What other things might Gabe like? Um, this is the code, um, the action is like. And then, um, so we go, it's kind of console off the recommendation that Gabe like, but also the recommendations of things similar to Silicon Valley. So these are the results. Cool. So that's the first way to build a rec engine. The second way is based on the content of the engine. So for example, <clears throat> let's say it's based on the content and categories of, of the um, of the movie. So let's say you like Hunger Games. Maybe you also like, I don't know, what might you like if you like Hunger Games? Natural. Exactly. No. So I'm going to demo the app that we built. Um, hopefully everything works. Okay, cool. Um, go. It's running. Oh, crap. Hold on. This is, it is running. Yeah. Awesome. Yay. Oh, it is running. It is running. Cool. Can you guys see? Awesome. This is the app. So I'm going to need a volunteer to sign up. Who wants to do this? Um, Massimo. Okay, cool. Massimo at Massimo.com. Okay, cool. One, two, three. <laughs> awesome. All right. Payment. All right. Also, outside is a VHS engine. So it's a um, Netflix for hipsters in Brooklyn. So, well, I'm not Brooklyn, but everywhere. So the idea is that you order VHS on this website, delivered by bikes to your house. So let's say you're really hip, so you're going to choose Brooklyn plan, which is 10 movies a month. Um, let's not worry about address for now. <clears throat> All right, cool. Let's click on movies. All right, give me two movies you like on this list. Uh, 12 Angry Men. Oh, cool, awesome. Nice. Good choice. All right, add to queue. Nice. One more. Uh, maybe one or two more. Yeah. Uh, five that's in the nice. Awesome. <laughs> we see, we see. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Maybe one more. Love the Rings. Yeah, two users for me. Yeah, sure. That's pretty hip of you. Awesome. Cool. And so <clears throat> he just got three movies in here. And the way this works is that it's based on categories. So because you like the movies in those categories, it's going to recommend you movies in those other in the same categories that you might like as well. Yeah. Shout out to Dane who wrote a lot of like, this code as well. All right, cool.
So that's how this works, and it's working. It's a live demo, and it's working, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are the differences between two approaches? I mean, they're, they're obviously different. Um, there are differences in performances and scalability between the two of them. One is based on like users and items. One is based on users, and one based more on like, content and the features of the items. Um, Things that you can also do to make your engine even better is you can factor in a social factor like Spotify does. Spotify has a pretty heavy emphasis on what your friends are listening to. Versus Pandora is more like what you like as in your taste in music, whereas Spotify also take that into account, but they also care a lot about what your friends are, are listening to. So Spotify would be a cool one, taste and preferences, contextual filtering. For example, like a movie for Netflix and chill would be like different than a movie that you watch on your own. Oh, Netflix can see with somebody, I mean, versus like a movie version on your own, for obvious reasons. Cool. So some of the libraries you could use is the graph theory library that Facebook uses in their, um, so Storefront has a really cool article on this topic as well. I highly recommend checking out. Raccoon library is a cool one. Likely and Alike libraries are the ones that um, were featured on Hacker News on Y Combinator homepage. Amazon Machine Learning is a really cool one as well. The Google Brain TensorFlow and Google Prediction API are awesome. Google declared themselves as a machine learning, machine learning company, and so I, Google has some really cool libraries that I highly recommend you guys should check out. Um, even more recommendation engine stuff. Yay. Um, I'm probably going to work on this topic for my Stackathon as well. So if anyone want to talk to me about it, um, yeah, come talk to me. Cool. Thank you.